The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. Well, after a little bit of rain early in the day in Cincinnati, the sky is beginning to clear, and it is a beautiful night for baseball at Great American Ballpark. And the opening game of a very interesting three-game series. The two-time defending National League champion Philadelphia Phillies, the former team of that man Scott Rowland, come to town to take on the Cincinnati Reds. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Chris Welsh, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball. And, Chris, we talked about the stretch of games beginning tonight, three at home, then a 10-game road trip through Chicago, the Mets, and against this Philadelphia team again. Well, you'll get a real idea, perhaps, where the Reds really are this season in terms of stacking up with the powers that be in the National League. You know, Tom, I like what you said to me after the game yesterday as we packed our stuff and left after that loss to the Indians. He said, tomorrow starts a big league series. And that's exactly what it is. When you get the world champion Philadelphia Phillies in here, these guys can mash and they can play well. So when you take an assessment of where you are as a Reds baseball team, what have you done against the good teams? What have you get done against those teams who you should have beaten on paper anyway. So the Reds right now are 13 and 17 against teams with winning records out there, and they are 29 and 17 against teams with losing records. Now, first thing I see is they've played a lot more teams with losing records right now than they've played winning teams. So you hear you what you've got on the docket coming up. The Philadelphia Phillies, they're over 500. The Chicago Cubs, even though they're under 500, they're always tough when they play Wrigley Field. No doubt about that. The Mets are over 500, and then you get the Phillies again on the road. This is not an easy 14 game stretch by any means. Which prompts our Brandon Phillips Geico direct quote of the game after yesterday's game talking about these upcoming games. We'll find out how good we really are. We can compete with anybody. But competing is over now. It's about winning. So you try and go out there and get the Philadelphia Phillies. You're getting Kyle Kendrick in the opener, Joe Bland tomorrow, and then their ace Roy Halladay Wednesday. I find it refreshing. Finally, Reds players and brass, upper upper office people are talking about winning, not competing. It's about winning. It isn't about practice. It isn't about competing. It's not about staying in the game. It's about nailing down a championship, and that's what they're out to do. And the guy who will try and start the winning ways is on the mound tonight. Johnny Cueto facing a mighty good Philadelphia lineup. We'll talk more about Johnny in a moment. High definition television, courtesy of our friends from H.H. Gregg. Talked about what a lovely weather night it's turned into. What about later tonight? Let's check in with Tim Hedrick. The most explosive offense in the National League. Plays the Phillies tonight. Clear to partly cloudy. Looks like a nice night. The air mass will begin to dry out, get a little bit less humid. 79 down to 75 by 9 o'clock, down to about 73 by 11. Enjoy the game. Boy, you got to like that delivery. Well, you're not kidding about that. Maybe you ought to be a weatherman. How about Johnny Cueto? He doesn't need to be a weatherman. He just needs to keep the ball down. And when he does, boy, is he very, very good. He's got life on his fastball. His changeup is his main off-speed pitch. And when he throws that down, as you see to most of those left-handed hitters, he will get lots of outs and lots of ground balls. The only games in which he's really pitched poorly is when he gets the ball up around the waist. But he's got a little room for revenge and some payback. Huh. This happened last year, July the 6th, against the Phillies. Over at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, they wallop Johnny Cueto, and I mean they wallop them bad. Two-thirds of an inning, nine runs overall. Everything they hit found a hole. Some of it was soft, some of it was hard. Overall, though, that's a line that you'd love to forget forever and ever, especially until you get a chance to pay him back, and I think he's on a mission tonight. All right, here we go. The first of 13 leading up to the All-Star break. The first of three against the Phils. First pitch next. Time is there by Ford F-Series trucks, the best-selling trucks, 33 straight years. By Just For Men, for mustache and beard, keep your edge. And by Skyline Chili, you know it's Skyline time when you get that craving for a Skyline three-way or cheese conies. Repke Big starting lineup for the two-time defending National League champion Philadelphia Phillies. They won the whole shooting match two years ago. Jimmy Rollins healthy again at short. Shane Victorino in center. Chase Utley has been a monster against the Reds. He bats third. 
Brian Howard at first, Jason Wirth in right, Raul Labanez in left, a ladder third to Brian Schneider, Wilson Valdez, and Kyle Kendrick against Johnny Cueto. Uh, Johnny Cueto is still only 24 years old, one of the younger successful pitchers in the major leagues right now. He's won seven of his last eight, although he has struggled. He showed you that graphic when he was warming up, how he struggled mightily last year against this Philly team. First pitch fastball up and away to Jimmy Rollins, and his game is underway. Get a look at the overall season numbers for Cueto. ERA under four for the first time all year. And he's fallen behind Rollins, who's healthy again. And Boy, when this guy's in the Philadelphia lineup, they are a very different team. He's only played in 17 games all year, two stints on the disabled list with a right calf strain. Straight away center field. And Stubbs drifts one step shy of the wall to hold it in, and Rollins retired to begin the night. The Reds on defense presented by Ford, Gohm, Stubbs, Bruce, left center and right. Roland and Botto, the corner infielders, Orlando Cabrera, Brandon Phillips up the middle for the battery of Johnny Cueto and Ramon Hernandez back in the lineup after an off day yesterday. Reds took two of three to begin this homestand over the Indians after sweeping the final three games in Oakland on their last road trip. Now Victorino. And the Hawaii native looks at a fastball on the outside corner of strike. Now the Phillies for the first time all year are swinging the bats like everybody thought they would. There's a bouncer foul like everybody thought they would when the season began. From the middle of May through the middle of June, 25 games. This Philadelphia team did not even average three runs per game for a month. They hit 217. They were shut out six times. Well, ever since then, Charlie Manuel's team in their last 11 games averaging seven runs per game. And 38% of their hits in those 11 games have been extra base hits. 0 oh 2 to Victorino. It should be noted the Reds are catching the Phillies at a pretty good time, if you will, right now. Yeah, they are hitting right now, but they have two of their regulars that are not in the lineup, at least tonight. Will not see their regular catcher in this entire series, Carlos Ruiz. And their outstanding third baseman, Placido Polanco, has missed the last four games and now a fifth game as he's continued to be bothered by a sore left elbow. Well, still in all, even missing those players, this is a, a kind of offense, a rare offense, where you have lots of speed and lots of power. Uh, no two pitch, a fastball banged into center field, a base hit for Victorino. He has 16 stolen bases. And this is what I'm talking about. You know, you have really two leadoff hitters. I mean, some teams don't even have a one good leadoff hitter. The Phillies have two. And these guys are somewhat interchangeable. When you put them back to back, though, and Rollins makes it out, you've got your second leadoff hitter coming up in Victorino. And he is a prototypical leadoff hitter, speed, power, and, of course, being able to steal some bases. The Phillies lead all the Major League Baseball in stolen base percentage so far this year. An 86% success rate. In fact, they have led all major league teams in that category in each of the last three years. Now Chase up. He's down a strike. Utley nowhere near the numbers that he has had in this point in a season over the last five years. Batting average down. Yeah, 11 home runs. Yes, 37 batted in. picked off Victorino. Well, that's a pretty good indication usually. And a lot of these pickoff throws that are made to first base, not just by the Reds, but every team, are called by the dugout. I mean, Chris Byer is the guy in the dugout. He's He's been given the charge of controlling the opposition running game. And if he sees something funny going on, he'll call for a pickout. And they must feel that Victorino is trying to position himself to steal. He's off. And when you see a guy dive in and barely get back in, he knows 
That's the extent of his lead. He can't get any farther than that. And if you get him when he's breathing the wrong way, you may be able to pick him. Got a great look right alongside the Reds' first base dugout there of Chris Spire. You know, of all the guys in the Phillies lineup, though, Tom, this is the guy that scares me the most. I mean, he has made a living off of hitting off of Reds pitching career-wise. He's played 40 games against the Reds and has hit 14 home runs, driven in 36 runs. So he's really driving in a run every game he plays against the Reds. On base, almost one out of every two times. He just somehow is able to get it up and get it going against the Reds every time he sees the Reds come to town. Plato fell behind Roland, retired him. Rollins, I beg your pardon. He got ahead 0-2 on Victorino, a lot of hit. And now ahead of Utley in one ball, two strikes. And now the count even up. Utley, like the rest of his teammates, at least most of his teammates, Starting to find that offensive groove here over the last week and a half, two weeks. Two and two to count on Utley. Up and away, ball three. Now that was a changeup right there, so you got to figure if you miss on miss with a changeup on the 2-2 two -two pitch, you're probably coming back with a fastball on the 3-2 pitch. You hope at the point where Johnny Cueto is in his career now, he can still go back to the changeup. You've got to come and get Utley right here. You do not want to put another man on base and have to pitch to Ryan Howard. Runner goes and it's grounded to the right side. Victorino will advance to second, but Phillips throws out up. And there are two away for Ryan Howard. And for your information, that was another changeup. Which, in my estimation, is good news because Johnny Cueto from the get go is using all of his pitches. Now Cueto walk about 10 feet behind the mound, walk back up on top of it before he goes toe to toe with big Ryan Howard. A 293 batter, 15 home runs, 55 runs batted in. Strike one. Kerwin Hanley tonight, our home plate umpire. CB Buckner works at first, Doug Gettings at second, and the crew chief is Dana DeMuth at third. Hit hard, but right at Johnny Gomes in the bright sunshine. And the inning is over. A hit a man left. Reds come to bat in a scoreless game. Dusty Baker's Reds, 42 up, 34 down, a half game in front of the National League Central. They're empty big starting lineup tonight. Brandon Phillips at second, Orlando Cabrera at short, Joey Votto at first. Scott Rowland, originally a Philly. The cleanup hitter at third, Johnny Gomes in left, Jay Bruce in right. The latter third of Drew Stubbs, Ramon Hernandez, and Johnny Cueto making his 15th start of the year, a 4 and 2 record, is right hander Kyle Kendrick. Well, Kyle Kendrick, Kendrick is 12 games over 500 in his career, and he's only 25 years old. He's not a high strikeout pitcher. He only has 37 strikeouts in 80 innings, so he's a guy that really pitches to contact. He wants you to hit his pitch rather than miss his pitch, and boy, he's much better on the road this year than he is at home. At home, his earned run average is over six. On the road, it is much more respectable. Overall, he's 4-2 and two and 14 starts. Kendrick has never beaten the Reds in his career or never lost to the Reds in his career despite the fact that he has really been hit hard by the Reds. A 3-0 record with an ERA of over six and a half. We'll see if the Reds can continue to hit him as well, but this time beat him. Brandon Phillips looks at a strike. I was talking to 
their manager, Charlie Manuel, before the game. I said, I remember Kendrick last year. The Reds hit him hard. It seemed like they were hitting him right at him. And you got him out of there after five, Charlie. He looked at me and said, that's the kind of pitcher he is. Gets a lot of runs, and he gets a fair amount of luck. That is a foul ball somewhere off the front foot, the first front leg of Brandon Phillips. Let's take a look and see where it got him. You know, players sometimes, players sometimes poo poo this, but I really believe with, you know, the leading vote getter and the, essentially the consensus best second baseman in the league coming into your town, Brandon Phillips sees Chase Huntley out there and says, you know what, I'm going to ratchet my game up even a little bit more than I normally do. So I'm looking for Phillips in this series to really grind it out. To, to show that he can be a team leader, to fit into that number one spot in the order, trying to kickstart the offense, and show everybody in baseball that he's every bit as good as that Philly second baseman. You know, you look at those power numbers where Utley has two more home runs, Utley has 12 more RBIs. But bear in mind, outside of the first three weeks of the season, Phillips has hit either second or first the entire time. Yeah. Utley's a three-hole hitter every day, rain or shine. And you dive into some of the extra base hit numbers. You know, Utley has 13 doubles. Phillips has 21 doubles. And you look at runs scored, you look at total hits. I mean, there's no contest in those categories between Phillips and Utley. Phillips leads the league in runs scored, the second most hits in the league. But you can have that kind of a first half, but until you show yourself over a full year or more, the consensus will stay the same. But here's a chance, though, face-to-face, -face, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. You don't get to do it like you do in other sports. So all you can do is try to get yourself going as best you can. And you do it usually when that other best guy is in your house. Seventh pitch in this at bat. Phillips against Kendrick leading off the Reds' first inning. And would you know it? It's a ground ball right to his counterpart. What a look. Let's take a look at the Phillies on defense, presented by Ford. Victorino very fast in center. Ibanez and Love Jason Worth having a big year in life. Valdez for Polanco at third. Rollins, Huntley, and Howard round out the infield in the battery of Brian Schneider and Kyle Kendrick. One out, nobody on for Orlando Cabrera. Checks in at 240, three homers, 27 batted in. First pitch ground ball to Robbins, and just like that, two are out in the inning. Well, the last swing of the bat in yesterday's game by Joey Votto. He tomahawked a high fastball halfway into the Sun deck in right field for his 16th home run of the year. He's driven in and even 50. The Reds and the Rangers are the only two teams in baseball to have at least three players in their lineup with 50 or more runs batted in. The Reds have them hitting three, four, five in the lineup. Votto, Roland, and Gomes. 0 and 2. Well, clearly, the game plan for Kendrick is to pound Votto in, in, and in. All three of the pitches in this at bat get on his hands. Well, he started the same way to Brandon Phillips, patted him in and in and in, and then finally got him away, and Brandon kind of had a weak swing at it. You know, the teams that have been successful against Votto, this is how they pitch him. But it's not all that easy for most right-handed pitchers to get that fastball inside because the margin of error is so small. If you miss inside, you hit him in the ribs. If you miss out over the plate, you end up getting a brand-new baseball back from the umpire.
Two balls, two strikes to Joey Votto. And he comes in one more time to strike him out. A perfect first for Kendrick. We move to the second, no score. Four straight years of 40 home runs, 130 or more RBIs. Babe Ruth, Ken Griffey Jr., Sammy. And in the Philadelphia lineup tonight, Ryan Howard. Lined out to left, ending the first inning. Scoreless game as we begin the second. Jason Worth, Raul Labanez, and Brian Schneider against Johnny Cueto. Worth a 287. 13 home runs, 47 runs batted in. Boy, what a pickup this young man has turned out to be for Philadelphia. Originally a catcher drafted by the Baltimore Orioles. Really never got a chance to play. Picked up by the Dodgers. Where it looked like he would be a very good player for them for a long, long time until he got hurt. As he was moved to the outfield. It's 16 home runs, knocked in 47 runs after a short stint with Toronto. But then set out all of those six. The Phillies took a flyer on him. And they've never looked back. Knocked in 99 runs, hitting 36 home runs last year. Base hit in the right field on a 3-2 pitch. Now Johnny Cueto trying to stay away from Jason Worth right here on a 3-2 count. Maybe cut the ball a little bit. That may have even been a slider, but you see where the height of the pitch was. Just kind of stayed up, and Worth was able to hit that ball the other way. If that ball is down, down around the knees, it's a lot tougher to cover with the sweep part of your bat. You end up getting out of the end of the bat, but if you get a waist high, it's a lot easier to hit the other way with some authority. Now Raul Labanez having a down year, 241 hitter, five home runs, does have 32 runs batted in. is now 37 years old. And in fact, I correct that. He just turned 38 a couple of weeks ago. Has just had an excellent career and for so long, for so many years, flew under the radar until he came to Philadelphia where he played on a, a very good Phillies team last year. He had 34 home runs and knocked in 93. He had had three straight years in Seattle, I think, that would surprise everybody. Where he knocked in over 100 runs and has had four of those seasons in his major league career. And Plato's fallen behind Raul Labanez, three balls and one strike. A very short lead and the 3-1 is a rocket knocked down by Phillips and he's going to get the out on the force play at second base. Good play by Brandon Phillips. That ball was hit like a rocket. I'm wondering if it may have been knuckling out there at Brandon Phillips because it looked like he had a chance to catch it. But what you don't realize sometimes balls are hit so hard off the bat that they come as a knuckleball. And I don't think there's anything harder to catch than a knuckleball coming at you about 105 miles an hour. 
Big swing and a miss by Brian Schneider. We have seen Brian Schneider seemingly forever. Has spent his entire major league career in the National League East. Down the bottom should be two. There's one. There's two and the inning is over. A hit, nobody left, middle of the second, still a scoreless game. <laughs> well, nothing's better than great food and talking baseball with good friends. That's why you need to get into the lunch bunch. Go to FoxSportsOhio.com for a chance to win one of 10 HD TVs. Plus a grand prize featuring lunch with Chris Welsh, Jay Bruce, and the rest of the Fox Sports Ohio broadcast team. The Fox Sports Ohio Lunch Bunch Sweepstakes is powered by Time Warner Cable. Right, Ritz come to bat, bottom of the second inning on a beautiful night for baseball in Cincinnati. Well, the rest of this week is just spectacular weather-wise. Temperatures cool down the highs over the next seven days. In the high 70s, the low 80s. Scotty Rowland digging in. Here he is, 35 years old. Rowland drafted in the second round back in June of 1993 by the Phillies. Made his major league debut on August the 1st, 1996. Starting both games of a doubleheader. Had a double off Donovan Osborne in game one for his first career hit. And the following year, became just the seventh player unanimously elected as National League Rookie of the Year. And the Phillies' first Rookie of the Year since the great Dick Allen back in 1964. He was Richie back then. Indeed he was. In the middle of the 2002 season, Roland dealt to the Cardinals in a trade made by current Reds general manager Walt Jockety for Placido Polanco, Bud Smith, and Mike Timlin. And of course, for the Cardinals, he wound up going to five All Star games. Hunt smashed down to third. Valdez will throw out. The former Philly third baseman, four up, four down for Kyle Kenner. Well, when the Reds get it done with an RBI this year, that means another $25 from Shakely for the Reds Community Fund. Shakely, it's done. Now Johnny Gomes. Batting averages slipped down to 284. Nine home runs, 18 best, 51 runs batted in. Well, the other thing to keep in mind about this series, and Chris talked about the rivalry perhaps between Phillips and Utley. But for some of the Reds that are trying to certainly make a strong bid for the National League All-Star team, and there are plenty of them in that category. Don't forget the man who helped select the team and the man who will manage the National League team. He is sitting in a third base dugout for the next three days. By the time the Reds and Phillies play the final four games before the All-Star break, the All-Star teams will have already been decided. Does Johnny Gomes belong? Well, you better believe it. Those are the three leading vote-getters right now in the National League. Gomes pops it up to Rollins, and that's two up and two down in the second inning. Still in search of their first base runner tonight against Kyle Kendrick, and here's Jay Bruce. Jay, like most of his teammates, a very quiet finale in the Cleveland series yesterday. Jay 0 for 4, struck out twice. The Reds only had four base hits in the game.
that didn't take long. Three pitches and Bruce is gone swinging. And a two. Still no score. Still time to vote for your favorite Reds and send them to the 2010 All-Star Game in Anaheim. Cast your ballot now and vote up to 25 times at Reds.com. Voting ends July the 1st. We're only three days away, so vote now at Reds.com. And really, you wonder how many people are truly voting online or how many people are voting when they come to the ballpark. Because there certainly has been a direct correlation as it pertains to the starters right now among all National League teams when you look at the attendance numbers for the players right now that are the leading vote getters among all National League. The Phillies average the most fans per game on average of any team in the league. The Dodgers are second, the Cardinals are third, the Milwaukee Brewers are sixth. And those four teams have every position on the field except for shortstop among National League players. We'll show you the leading vote getters here in a moment. Two and one account on Wilson Valdez, and it's in there a strike. The only player of the eight position players that would reside outside of the teams that have very big attendance numbers would be Hanley Ramirez of the Florida Marlins at shortstop. It's interesting to know that the Reds have played more home games than anybody in the league, but the attendance numbers are just not there. I mean, nowhere near the big boys. Teams like Philadelphia, the Dodgers, St. Louis, forget about them. But even Milwaukee, a similar sized town, the Brewers are averaging 13,000 fans per game more than the Reds are so far this season. So guys like Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder, heck, even Ricky Weeks, he's been in the top three or four at second base the entire time. That one swung on and fouled out of play. And you take a look at those names presented by Honda. I mean, take a look around. Ryan Braun, big attendance. Likewise for Andre Ethier, Atlanta, same deal. Pools, Utley, Polanco, now the leader at third, and then Yadier Molina behind the plate. A walk to the number eight hitter to begin the inning by Johnny Cueto. Uh, the National League, you know what that does? It sets up perfectly the opportunity for the pitcher to come up and what he does most at the plate, which is lay down a sacrifice. I mean, you don't want to walk anybody. But with nobody out is when you really have to come after that number eight hitter. Kendrick, a pair of sacrifices, not much of a hitter. That went out in front of the plate, and Hernandez will. Go on to the covering Brandon Phillips and Kendrick with his third sacrifice. Boy, you just hope that leadoff walk to the number eight hitter doesn't come back to bite Cueto. Brian Price, the Reds pitching coach, going to come out and talk things over with Ramon Hernandez and Johnny Cueto. Before we roll back over to the top of the order in Jimmy Rollins. Yeah, this might be one of those meetings that George Grand used to call a checkup from the neck up. And just try to get him back in focus because, you know, what we've seen from Johnny Cueto is, you know, some people talk about how his, his delivery will go awry in the middle of a game. I'm more of the mind that it's his mental state that he just loses focus for one reason or another and is, is unable to continue to stay focused on what he needs to do. Brian Price needs to go out there every once in a while. I just remind him, saying, hey, you know, these guys are real good here. Do not think that one for one minute you can just cruise through an inning just because the other guy in the other dugout cruised through his inning. You've got to bear down against the Phillies every pitch of the ball game. 
Rollins pops it up in the shallow left field. Johnny Gomes with an eye on it, and here two away in the inning. Now this team put it second base, and here comes Shane Victorino. All right, now this changeup has really been a good pitch for him. You see the bad swing by Rollins. You can't read the changeup coming out of his hand because his the difference between his changeup speed wise is about 16 miles an hour. And that's a lot for a hitter to try to decipher and formulate in a fifth of a second. So his fastball comes in at 95. You know, his changeup comes in around, you know, 79, 80, 81, something like that. And you find yourself way out in front because you've got to cheat a little bit to catch up to that heater. Victorino on an 0-2 pitch singled in the center field in the first inning was stranded at second base. Wilson Valdez a runner out at second with two away in the inning. You got the big boys coming up next. You've already walked a number eight hitter in this inning. Now Cueto's falling behind 2-0, make it 3-0 to Shane Victorino. Well, don't let his size fool you at all, Victorino. He's got a very quick bat, lots of bat speed, and home run power. I mean, he's got 12 bombs already, Victorino does. So, I mean, he's not the kind of guy that you can just get behind 3-0 and or 3-1 and and lay a fastball down the middle. He'll put you right out of the ballpark. We saw the numbers there with two outs and runners in scoring position. And that's back-to-back -back pitches Victorino thought was ball four. How about that? A 3-1 changeup. That's how much the Reds feel that they need to pitch very tough to this guy. Ball in on him and he pops it up, backing up on it is Cabrera, and that is that. So good work by Johnny Cueto, leaving a runner at second. After two and a half, Phils and Reds, no score. It was supposed to move in this way, but watch which way the ball actually moved. It comes back out over the plate. And gives Victorino a pretty good shot at it, although he just popped it up and made the third out to the shortstop. So Brian Price is going to come in the dugout and say, hey, you got it. You can't get underneath the cutter like that. You've got to keep your fingers up on top of it and drive that ball down so that it actually cuts into a right-hander, or a left-hander, that is, and away from a right-hander. And that's just all about finger positioning on the baseball. A good pickup by Brian Price. Uh, hopefully the lesson learned by Johnny Cueto and... You know, when you get away with one like that, sometimes you seem to forget it, and it's a good thing your pitching coach is right there to remind you, hey, not every time you make a mistake are you going to end up with a pop-up to the shortstop. Uh, Kendrick back-to-back -back perfect innings to start the night, so the latter third in the Reds' batting order coming up here in the third. And Bruce Tubbs looks at a first pitch fastball strike one. Ramon Hernandez next, then the pitcher Johnny Cueto. Stubbs at 234, eight home runs, 35 driven in. And he has rung up strike three. Third strike out of the first seven batters faced by Kyle Kendrick tonight. And we remind you like we do every night if a Reds player hits one of the Toyota signs in left center or right center during our game tonight. Chris Collier of Erlanger, Kentucky will win the beautiful new Tundra on display here every day at the ballpark. Register for your chance to win in an upcoming game by seeing your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky 
Toyota dealer. Here's Ramon Hernandez. Reds catcher at 281, three home runs, 16 driven in. And takes up and in for a ball. Making it look mighty easy this first time through the Reds batting order. Well, he's really got his good stuff tonight. And for a guy like Kyle Kendrick, what that means is good control of his breaking ball, but even more than that, command of his fastball. He's been able to throw Joey Votto inside, so you're able to throw consistently to the glove side, and that's a tough place for a pitcher to go normally inside to a lefty, outside to a righty. And he's pitched, interestingly enough, he has struck out the three youngest players in the Reds lineup other than the, the pitcher, Johnny Cueto. So he's really kind of going to school right here for a 25 year old. He looks very polished. Cueto, four hits in 27 at bats. Two and oh. have struggled against Philadelphia over the last couple of years. Everybody in the league has struggled against Philadelphia the last couple of years. 2-1 pitch. A bouncing ball. This will be a nine pitch inning for Kyle Kendrick. He's retired all nine batters in the game. Still no score as we go to the fourth. Ballpark by JTM Food Family Fun JTM by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com or call 1 800 947 AUTO. And by GMC, we are professional grade. Top half of the fourth inning we go at Great American Ballpark. Opening game of this three game series between the Reds and the Philadelphia Phillies. No score so far. Johnny Cueto against Kyle Kendrick. Chris, you were digging in earlier tonight to some Papa John's pizza. Well, I wasn't the only one. Papa John's was kind enough to feed our crew, a lot of the safety officers around the ballpark, and I'll tell you what, they brought box after box after box of delicious pizza. We thank them for their. Hospitality, we enjoyed it. Indeed, we did. And we all needed a nap after eating all that pizza. And that's where I'm headed right now, partner. I've seen about the seventh. Or you mean you're going back to get some more pizza? <laughs> that's what I meant. A little more pizza. I don't know whether you meant the pizza or the nap. Or maybe a little pizza and then a nap. They both sound good. <laughs> they sound very good, in fact. <laughs> to the left center field. Stubbs going to try and cut that baby off and hold Utley to a single. Here comes Utley. Here comes a throw, and he is out at second base. Well, the Reds run the bases so aggressively, they've got to feel that the same thing will happen to them defensively by the Phillies. Very aggressive, especially the top of the order. And Drew Stubbs knows this. He comes over, cuts that ball off, and he fires it into Brandon Phillips, who makes a great play because that ball was a little bit off the second base bag. Phillips has got to get it and dive back and grab his, and try to tag his arm before Utley's able to get his fingers on the bag. Utley thought he was safe, had a few words for Doug Eddings, a whole second base umpire, and then trots on back. And Johnny Cueto says, well done, Drew Stubbs. Thank you. 
Not quite the big shift put on defensively against Ryan Howard as we've seen in the past, but certainly a variance of that. Brandon Phillips you see out in short right field and Orlando Cabrera about 10 feet to the third base side of the bag at second. Boy, really an interesting kind of a shift because what you're giving Ryan Howard is a huge hole between second base and shallow right field. But look at this hole right here. You've got a lot of space right there for Ryan Howard. So if he tries to hit the ball up the middle, that's where his really aim ought to be. That's where his most spot is, of course, in the infield. But where Ryan Howard likes to aim the ball is up there in those red seats somewhere. And you better be careful here on three and one. He lined out hard to left field his only time up tonight. And it's out towards those seats in right center field, but it'll stay in the park. Now here comes Howard to second. Bruce had a long throw and wasn't going to be able to get it there in time. Howard a double couple of hard hit balls to begin this inning against Johnny Cueto by Utley and Howard. Well, he's got tremendous power, Ryan Howard does, and if he gets a ball in a sweet spot, he's going to hit it a long way. I think he got out in front of that ball a little bit. Hernandez wanted it in and floated out a little bit in the strike zone, and he finds a seam in the gap. Tell you what, the big guy hustles right out of the box right there. If he dogged it out of the box, that throw by Jay Bruce would have gotten him. Now Jason Worth, he singled into right field his first time up. Ball up and in, and it's 2 0 now on Worth. Cueto has thrown nearly double the number of pitches in the game so far as his counterpart, Kyle Kendrick. Kendrick a little over 30, Cueto closing in on nearly 60. The 2 0 breaking ball there that snaps in for a strike. Cueto just turned 24 years young before this season began. Runs a fastball up and in. Cueto tonight already making his 77th career start. Every appearance he's ever made as a big leader has been as a starting pitcher. Fell behind Howard three and one. Looked like a three one changeup. I think it was a three one changeup. Take another look at this stat though, and you saw the dusting pitch, the previous one that he threw to Dennis or to uh, Jason Worth. Johnny Cueto has hit since he came into the league in 2008 more batters than anybody else over that period of time. 35 of them. Well, you gotta like that about him. Willing to pitch inside. This is on a 3 2 pitch in. And quickly, time for our ATT trivia question as Ramon Hernandez comes out to talk with Cueto. Who are the only two shortstops in Major League Baseball history to go 30 30 and in the same year win a gold glove? And as a hint, both of these teams are represented by those two players. Now Raul Abanez, two on, one out. And after a meeting just a moment ago, Hernandez coming out to talk with Cueto again. Well, you got to be a little concerned if you're Ramon Hernandez. He's the first step before the pitching coach will come out. Brian Price, they send the catcher out to talk to him, try to settle him down a little bit. But he's the one who really ought to be able to find out what's going on because if his pitches aren't acting just the way they should, as they are in the bullpen in between starts, the catcher's the first one to know it. Fastball knee high on the outer edge, even a count at one and one to Ibanez. You get a fastball like that, he hopes now maybe to throw a changeup. Ibanez rolls it over, you get out of the inning with a double play.
Two to one, one out, scoreless game in the fourth. And Cueto again, a third straight hitter, has fallen behind three and one. You know, and he's not missing by all that much. And where he's missing is down in the zone. In the bad games that Cueto has had, he's missed those pitches about belt high, and they whacked him all over the yard. Son shake off from on Hernandez there. Comes back with a 3 1 fastball. And that should have been ball four, but Ibanez helped it. This should be that double play you talked about. Look at Phillips, and they're unable to turn. Oh, they caught it out. Ibanez can't believe. Can David Lopes? Phillips sticking with it. Cabrera had to find a bag and they turn two to end the inning. Big double play. Starting with Brandon Phillips on the hot smash off the bat of Raul Ibanez to end the top of the fourth inning. Well, if he's trying to get the attention of the Phillies and Chase Adley, he does it right here. Nice play also by Cabrera. And a very, very close call. Translate that as he looked like he could have been safe. Ebony has had some words for the first base umpire. And, and Brandon Phillips, how about that? You make a great play, what happens? You leave the inning off. Happens every time. These two guys are turning them. Of course, they're uh, the beneficiaries. You got to have guys that will induce some ground balls to be near the top of that list. I guess there's two sides of that. One, you have to have guys that induce ground balls. The others, you have to have runners in first base. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> All right, here's Brandon to begin the inning. Brandon, a lengthy at bat leading off the bottom of the first inning and wound up grounding out to Chase Hudley. They'll be followed by Cabrera and then Votto. The Reds without a base runner through the first three against Kyle Kendrick in the first of three between the Reds and the Phillies. And again, a slow roller right at Utley. Ten in a row retired by Kyle Kendrick tonight. Well, you can enjoy a great deal on Reds baseball coming up in the month of July thanks to Skyline Chili for a limited time. Visit any Skyline Chili restaurant, receive a special discount code with your purchase, and then you go to Reds.com slash Skyline to redeem your code for a Reds ticket and hat for just $20. Visit Reds.com slash Skyline today for more details. The Reds are giving you so many great ways to save a pile of money and come down to the ballpark to watch his first place team this summer. We've talked about the Kroger meal deal. We've talked about the two for Tuesday, the Budweiser promotion, now Skyline Chili. Phenomenal group outing, ticket prices. And there's a bullet down the left field line that'll be a two base hit for Orlando Cabrera. And the Reds have their first base runner of the night. Now Orlando Cabrera, who was stuck in really what was been a, a month-long slump, has been swinging the bat a little better over the last three or four days. And boy, look how he just brings that bat down. You know, Burke Jacoby talks about that a lot to his hitters. Swing down on the ball, because because once you start swinging up on it, you drop your back shoulder, and instead of hitting a line drive, you pop it up in the infield. And he rips it down the line and gets a double. Well, we'll see if Joey Votto can get him in for the game's first run. Now Kendrick pitches out of the stretch for the first time in over an hour. You know, he'll warm up in between innings. Throw his last couple of pitches working out of the stretch position, but nothing like facing a real batter. And he misses ball one to Votto, and he came inside on him again. That's how he got Votto out on strikes in the first inning. Inside, inside, inside. Now he's set up away. There goes a runner. Throw down to third base, and... Cabrera is easily thrown out. First time all year Cabrera has been gunned down in 11 tries. And he was an easy out right there. He had a small lead but a big jump. And Brian Snyder, a very capable catcher, a veteran journeyman of a catcher. And you can see the tag applied by Wilson Valdez. No doubt about it. 
Now 2 0 to Joey Votto. And that ball ripped into right field, and this will go beyond the reach of Jason Worth, and this will be a two base hit for Votto. So Cabrera Toronto thrown out, trying to steal with Votto at their player at the plate. Kind of interesting, though, Tom. You're getting a snapshot of aggressive baseball played by both these teams. Chase Utley tries to take a, you know, make a single into a double, and he's thrown out by Jay Bruce. What happens next? Ryan Howard hits a double, so it costs them a run. And here, a little bit of daring do by Orlando Cabrera didn't pay off, and the next guy hits a double. So, you know, you play aggressively. That's the way you live and die by the sword when you play games like this, and that's exactly what you should be doing, playing hard. Now Scotty Rowland with two away in a runner in scoring position. And that ball's in the air down the left field line. Is it fair? Is it gone? It's a fair ball and a home run off the fair pole for Scotty Rowland. again in Philadelphia. This swing of the bat. It looks like a sinker that caught a whole lot of the plate right there. Rolling out in front of it a little bit and it goes down and the question was whether it was going to be fair or foul. And when it ricochets off the fair pole it makes it an easy call. Oh what a pick me up there for this Reds team. Now 17 home runs a team high. A team best 52 runs batted in for Scotty Rowland, and that's of course the 300th home run of his major league career. Johnny Gomes trying to hit one out there as well, but pops it up to right, and that'll end the inning. So a landmark home run in the great career of Scott Rowland, and he gives his team a 2 0 lead. Scott Rowland. The only two runs of the game for either team through the front four tonight. You think his mom and dad will accept that anniversary present one day late? Oh, sure. Forty fifth anniversary Ed and Linda Rowland celebrated at the ballpark here yesterday. One day later. A team they used to root for when Scott was donning their uniform in town for the first of three tonight. All right now the latter third here for Johnny Cueto who has not had what you would call an easy inning in a game so far here tonight. There's a fly ball in a short right. Bruce will get to it, and Schneider retired. Phillies had a runner at second, stranded in the first inning. Had a leadoff single by Jason Worth in the second inning. In the third, a leadoff walk. A bunt got Valdez to second. Cueto had to retire Rollins and Victorino to get out of the inning. He allowed a single to Utley to begin the fourth, who was thrown out at second, then allowed a double to Howard. A walk to Worth, but a hot smash double play by Ibanez ended that inning. 0-1 oh to Wilson Valdez. The Phillies are hoping their regular third baseman, and you saw the leading vote getter so far among all National League third baseman for the All-Star team, Placido Polanco, will be back in the lineup tomorrow night. Cabrera throws out Valdez, and they're two away. Invite you to support the Reds Community Fund by buying a split the pot ticket every time you're here. Two dollar tickets available at the community corner until the end of the fourth inning. Every game and one fan each night will win 50 percent of the net proceeds. The remainder goes to the Reds Community Fund. Fly 
Fly ball right field by Kedrick. So he needed an easy inning. He got an easy inning. Reds lead 2 0. you to chat right now with Hall of Fame baseball writer Hal McCoy at FoxSportsOhio.com and then of course get a complete recap of tonight's game right after it's over at FoxSportsOhio.com presented by 1-800-SAFE-AUTO and SafeAuto.com Kyle Kendrick perfect through the first three innings Made it 10 in a row, taking care of Brandon Phillips to begin the fourth. But then allowed a double to Orlando Cabrera, thrown out trying to steal third. Votto doubled and scored on the home run by Roland. And we answer our trivia question tonight, brought to you by AT&T. The only two shortstops in Major League history in the same year to go 30-30 and win a gold glove. We told you each team represented. One of them on the field right now at shortstop, Jimmy Rollins in 2007. When he was the National League's most valuable player. And Barry Larkin in 1996 when he too was the National League's MVP. There's a great Barry Larkin. Right here in Cincinnati. That was his 30th home run of that 1996 year. Jay Bruce, a hot smash diving play by Rollins. Throw and got it. Now they missed Jimmy Rollins in more than just one area on offense when he was on the disabled list. They missed his defense, his leadership. What a play right here. Snags a sharply hit ball. I mean, this ball was smoked. And a good pickup at the other end by Ryan Howard. You know, normally when you hit the ball up the middle like that, you're thinking base hit. That's what the batting coach preaches to you. Hit it back at the weakest fielder on the field, and that would be the pitcher. But you've got Rollins there to pick him up. Strike one to Drew Stubbs, who struck out his first time up. A very good pitching matchup in that game tonight. An original St. Louis Cardinal, Danny Heron, on the mound for the Diamondbacks. And the Cardinal Lace, Chris Carpenter, starts at four. St. Louis, Arizona, a scoreless top half of the first inning will keep you up to date. And Stubbs is gone swinging. Second time tonight for Drew Stubbs, four of them in the game for Kyle Kendrick. Those four strikeouts for Kendrick ties a season high. Chris brought up earlier it only fanned 37 batters in 80 and a third innings coming into play tonight. So here's Ramon Hernandez with two down and nobody on. The only runs of the game, a two-run home run by Scott Rowland in the fourth. Everybody in action tonight in the National League. There are only three games over in the American League. Ball 
straight away center field, and this will take care of things for Kendrick in a one, two, three, fifth. Sixth inning around the corner. Reds two, Phillies nothing. On the day that the Marty and Joe field was dedicated in Fairfield, Ohio, we are with the Hamilton Joes, the summer baseball league, a wooden league made up of college players. Say hi, boys. There we go. Even Ben Hunterman, the son of producer Brian Hunterman on this team. It is time now for a Meyer text poll question of the night, though, and this one has to do with fans. We want to talk about the All-Star game. Should fans vote for the starters in the All-Star game? Text one for yes. It's for the fans. Or two, no. Shouldn't be a popularity contest. Text your votes at 37664. 37664. Standard text message rates apply well. The results coming up. How about the Hamilton Joes, of course, named after the old left-hander Joe Nuxall. Mm -hmm. Tommy, a big day. They dedicated that field up there in Fairfield. Yep, uh, and, the waterworks uh, part. It is hard to get your father to be emotional. But when he made his speech today, he said, I have a field dedicated to me and Anderson, but this is even more special right here because it's associated with the name of Joe Nuxall. And he actually choked up when he said it. And you know your dad. It's hard to get him to do that, so it meant a lot to him. Well, you're not lying. A very special uh, honor indeed to stay with um, my dad, Marty Brennan, and his partner for almost 35 years, Joe Nuxville. The field will be home to the Reds Community Fund's Rookie Success League of Burke, Butler County. A free baseball and softball summer camp for boys and girls ages 6 to 12. Great stuff. Reds come to bat, or the Phillies come to bat at the top of the sixth inning, trailing. 2 nothing. And another dribbler out in front of the plate. Better hurry for this guy. What a play by Hernandez. Victorino among the fastest players in the game. Well, I think he held the state record in the state of Hawaii for the 100-yard dash Shane Victorino did. That's where he earned the nickname the Flying Hawaiian. And that's a nice play by the Reds catcher. Getting out of the box quickly, moving your feet, setting yourself up so you make a quick turn towards your glove and fire it on to first base. Man, you're right there. what a nice play that is. So quickly, two gone against Robbins and Victorino. And now Chase Utley with the bases empty. Utley, one of two. By the stretch, a single into a double. It was thrown out by Drew Stubbs in the fourth inning. I am very surprised by this. Uh, I tell you, I, I never continue to be surprised by our uh, Reds text poll question presented by Meyer. How would you vote? I would vote yes, absolutely, not a sliver of a doubt. It is the fans' game. Yeah, but the, the outcome of the game now is is something special. Yeah. Home adva home field advantage in the World Series. Yep. But it, this game belongs to the fans. And, and if it's an exhibition game, I feel like they ought to see the guys they want to see. But only one man's opinion. There's a one hopper. What a nice play by Cabrera. And snapping it out of the dirt is Votto at first. Outstanding defense by the best defensive team in the National League so far this season. Wallace. And we just happened to pick that one for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. We could have picked one of about five or six plays so far. This has been a great defensive game for both teams and it really is echoed in the, sh in the score. you got a 2 nothing ball game, seven hits all that you've seen against really two of the best offensive teams in the National League this year. And that was our Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Now we begin with Johnny Cueto here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. 
Plato grounded out to the second baseman. His only time up. Fans for great food with family and friends this summer, think JTM. Food, family, fun. We got to look at those numbers a moment ago there by Kyle Kendrick his third time through the batting order the numbers jump significantly he had his troubles the second time through the batting and there's a rare miscue defensively by either team in his game tonight I'm assuming that's an error on Chase up I would think so it's a routine play he comes after it backhanded I'm not so sure he couldn't have come at it more towards the ball and kept the ball in front of him but he gets snagged with an error and now Johnny Cueto will be on the base pass the Reds have a leadoff man on so now we begin that third time through the batting order Brandon Phillips twice has bounced out to Chase Utley. center field by Phillips. So now, of course, you know, you ask yourself the question, if you're Dusty Baker, or are you asking Orlando Cabrera to bun this situation? And we'll find out. Probably a pretty safe bet that he is up there to bun. He has a pair of sacrifices so far this season. The Phillies taking a look at their defense are not quite sure if Cabrera's bunting. They've got Ryan Howard playing behind the runner over there at first base, Brandon Phillips. And they're going to let him swing away, and he dumps one into shallow right field. And on the third goes Cueto, so Cabrera gets his second hit, and they are loaded with nobody out in the red six inning. It's going to open up the floodgates, but for Kyle Kendrick, who had been cruising right along and then gave up that two run home run to Scott Rowland and then came back last inning, retire the Reds one, two, three, and the air opens the gate. A base hit, a blue base hit. And now Rich, Rich Doobie is going to come out and try to settle him down a little bit, more or less to give him a breather, just to try to break the momentum of the inning, which is clearly going in favor of the Reds. Well, you got the pitcher, the catcher, the third baseman, the first baseman surrounding Mr. Doobie out there on the mound. And you've got Joey Votto coming up with the bases loaded and nobody out. No activity right now, although a few bodies beginning to move around down the right field line in that Philadelphia bullpen. Well, now you have a chance to just bust this thing wide open. Only a 2-0 game now. And against this Philadelphia team, I mean, a 3-0 lead, even a 4-0 lead, is by no means breaking it open. Reds are hungry for more than that with the heart of their lineup coming up. Joey 
Granada struck out his first time up. He doubled down the right field line and scored on the rolling home run in the fourth inning. aggressive in this at bat. I mean he's normally a pretty aggressive hitter and he'll throw they'll get the pitch inside and he'll swing at it. But you've got bases loaded nowhere to put you here. At some point he's got to throw a real strike. I mean this situation the pressure is entirely on the pitcher. And you ought to be able to shrink that strike zone down to about the size of a Kleenex box. Two and one now to Joey Votto. Kendrick delivers. And it's ripped into right field. A base hit will bring in one run. They're going to hold Phillips at third as Plato scores. It's 3 nothing red. And they're still loaded with nobody out. Now Joey Votto does exactly what he ought to do. He gets a pitch he wants. This ball is a strike. It comes inside right there. And he loves that inside pitch. But that time he's looking for something inside. Because Kendrick missed away on the previous pitch. Hits it hard in the hole. The Reds up it by one. Well, the Phillies do indeed have activity in their bullpen. David Herndon, a right-handed. Who is a Rule 5 draft from the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And made his first career opening day roster this season. Rolling a two run home run to left field off the fair pole is last time up. They're loaded with nobody out. Ball one. Center field. This will bring in another run. Phillips tags. He'll score. Throws those in a third. Rolling three RBIs tonight. Reds lead four nothing. A good job by Mark Mary, the third base coach, and Brandon Phillips. Immediately upon this ball being lined up in the center field, he knows halfway there that that ball is going to be caught. So Phillips goes back to the bag. The Rolling family, go ahead, go, go, Brandon, run. And he drives in his third run of the game to Scott Rowland. Well, now Johnny Gomes, who twice has popped up. Once to short and once to right. Of course, both of those at-bats came with nobody on base. Where Gomes has done so much damage this year, his runners in scoring position. He has a second best batting average in a league at 436 behind only Cardinal right fielder Ryan Ludwig. Well, that is only the seventh pitch that Johnny Gomes has seen tonight. He hit the third pitch the first time up, the second pitch the second time up. Popped it out, and now he's got. Kyle Kendrick in a 2 0 hole. Great count to add to those numbers right there for Gomes at 2 0. And he pops it up. It is playable in foul ground. Two out. Now the catcher Brian Schneider will come out and talk with Kendrick. Well, 
before Jay Bruce settles in. Bruce struck out in the second inning and then hit that bullet back up through the middle. Where Jimmy Rollins made the diving play to his left and threw him out. to be room. Yes there is and foul ground for Worth and that'll retire the side but the Reds get two more at the end of six Reds four Phillies nothing. By at and find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network at and rethink possible. By your Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky Honda dealers, visit MyCincinnatiHondaDealer.com. By Granger, with over 900,000 products for the ones who get it done. And by the Basement Guys. Enter to win the free basement giveaway from the Basement Guys. To enter, go to TheBasementGuys.com. Four runs, six hits for the Reds. All four runs, all six hits have happened in two innings in a game of night. Two runs, three hits in the fourth. Two runs, three hits. A critical error made by Chase Udley in the sixth. So now, this one's squarely on the right arm of Johnny Cueto. They're given a 4 nothing lead against the Philadelphia Phillies. You're starting the seventh inning. This is one you got to nail down. Cueto's retired the last seven. Ever since he walked Jason Wirth to put two on after the Ryan Howard double in the fourth inning. Got that double play off the bat of Ibanez and had one, two, three innings in the fifth and the sixth. That one rolled over foul, one and one to Ryan Howard. Uh, Johnny Cueto has been on a very good personal roll his last couple of outings. He was a hard luck loser in Seattle when he lost to Cliff Lee one to nothing. Then he, lost, then he won a ball game in seven shot out innings plus in Oakland. So he's been very stingy with runs the last couple of times out. But neither of those clubs, even though with the American League and the designated hitter, can match the offensive potential that you have when you're facing the Philadelphia Phillies in this ballpark. Three and one out of Ryan Howard. It was a 3 1 pitch at Howard clubbed in the right center field for a double back in the fourth inning. If you're Johnny Cueto, you ought to be thinking, you know what? I'm up by four. I'm going to throw it right. I'm going to throw a strike here. And even if he hits a home run, I'm still up by three. But nothing changes the momentum of a game offensively faster than a leadoff walk. Rian two to Ryan Howard threw him a 3 1 fastball as Chris suggested right down to Cam. Let's see what he does. 3 2 fastball right down to Cam. I mean, you can say that when you're throwing 94 or 95 miles an hour. If he topped it out at 88, I might want to say you might want to feather that baby down around the knees. Center field at a ton by Howard, and that'll back up Stubbs to the wall, and it's up against the wall. This will be a three base hit for Ryan Howard. That ball not played well at all by Drew Stubbs. Yeah, it really turned him around, and I think that he forgot exactly where he was in relation to the center field wall. I think for a moment he thought that ball was going out of the ballpark, and he goes, he goes for it right to the wall. Looked like Johnny took a little bit off that pitch at 88 and he got turned around and that ball really was below his glove with a hit out there. All right, Harrod will chug it on around to get a triple. He's got a double and a triple. Three triples on a year for Howard who came in a spring training this year and by far the best shape he's ever been in in his major league career. 20 pounds lighter and financially. Well that came shortly thereafter. A lot heavier in that department. In better shape, too. That's the only time you can be heavier and in better shape. <laughs> Down to third base and going to throw out work. Right away in the inning. And Howard remains at third base. Well, the Reds and Budweiser, we talked about this now a great deal. Every Tuesday night the entire year, the Budweiser 2 for 22 deal. You can buy two field box tickets, great seats. You get two beverages for 22 bucks. That's regularly a $78 value. 
Bring a friend for a fun night out. Make it a date night with your wife, your girlfriend. Visit Reds.com slash Budweiser for your tickets today. Well, the infield conceding the run, leading 4-0. Runner at third. Here's Ibanez, and here's a fastball strike one. Get it. No activity in the Reds bullpen. 90 pitches thrown in the game so far tonight by Johnny Cueto. He left his last start in Oakland, seven innings, no runs. the end of the bat roll and get a bare hand throw the first and safe is a call at first. Ryan Howard scores to make it a four to one ball game. Just tough luck right there for Johnny Cueto. Now Scott Rowland makes about as nice a play as you can make right here. Rolla Banez gets an extra step coming out of the left handed bottom batter's box right there and I think he got it right that time. So now Brian Schneider who's bounced into a double play and fly to right. Well, Cueto going to try and quiet any hit of a rally here. And that went off the end of the bat. A sinking liner caught by Stubbs for the second out. And Ibanez back to first base. And that'll bring Wilson Valdez to the plate. After that infield hit and RBI by Abanez, the Reds bullpen springs into action. Right hander Nick Massett and left hander Bill Bray getting loose in the Reds pen. We've still not seen Bill Bray since he was brought back up from the minor leagues. This should end the inning. And it does. Phillies get a run on a couple of hits. Leave a man. Middle of the seventh. Played on the Reds in front by three. How good the Reds defense has been tonight. Double play started by Votto. Cabrera back to Votto early on. Cruz Stubbs throwing out Chase Udley trying to stretch a hit into a two base hit. A huge double play off the bat of Ibanez, which ended the Philadelphia fourth inning. Hernandez getting out from behind the plate to throw out the speedy Victorino. Cabrera, the very next batter. But it's been mighty good tonight. It's been mighty good all year long. Reds lead 4 to 1 as they come to bat still against Kyle Kendrick. Here in the home half of the seventh inning. Four runs, six hits, two men left on base for the Reds. One run, six hits, an error. And four men stranded by the Phillies against Johnny Cueto. We'll see if Cueto bats here in the seventh inning. He's due up third. Well, Cueto has those batting gloves on. You see the helmet sitting right next to him on his right hand side. Stubbs to at bats. A strikeout looking, a strikeout swinging. Tough play here for Valdez, and not sure even if he picks it up cleanly, he throws out Stubbs. I don't think it even makes a difference right there. That's how quickly Drew Stubbs gets down the line. And that's the advantage that you have when you've got the kind of speed that Drew Stubbs. You strike out a couple of times, you hit a soft roller, all of a sudden, instead of being 0 for 3, you're 1 for 3. 
And that'll boost that batting average up there. But not only that, it gives the Reds another leadoff man on and a chance to get that run back that they gave up in the in the top of the seventh inning. Plato has moved into the on deck circle for the time being. Of course, a perfect world, a perfect world is Hernandez hits one of the seats. But Plato may get a chance to bat if you have first and second and nobody out. Well, Bill Bray has taken a seat in the Reds' bullpen and has given way to Arthur Rhodes. So Rhodes and Massey getting ready. Really stepped up here tonight. Opening game of a three game series against the two time defending National League champions. Playing their best baseball of really about the last uh, month and a half, nearly two full months. They got off to the phenomenal start to begin the year. Then had some problems where they couldn't hit for nearly a month. And now for the last nearly two weeks, they've knocked the cover off the ball. Going and a base hit in the right center field will go to the wall and score stops all the way from first base. And the Reds lead 5 0 on the double by Hernandez. 5 to 1 ball game. A timely hitting right there by Ramon Hernandez. I don't know if that was a hit and run or a run and, and a run and hit. Because Drew Stubbs took off and really never looked back. But that line drive goes right over the glove of the second baseman, Chase Sally, to the wall, or nearly to it. And by the time that Jason Worth and company can get it back in, Drew Stubbs cruises home. And that'll keep Johnny Cueto in the ballgame. And Cueto up there to sacrifice a runner down to third. Cueto has two of them on the year. Well, you said it right, Tom. Sacrifice him down to third. If he gets it down to third base, he'll get that runner to third base. This is a lot easier situation now for the runner, Ramon Hernandez. It's not a force play at third, so he doesn't have to be quite as aggressive out there as a base runner. They're going to try to keep him snug and throw him out trying to get over there to third base. Johnny can make it easy for him, though. Plenty good enough. The catcher will throw out Cueto to the covering ugly. Down to third goes Hernandez. Sacrifice number three for Cueto. Baseball's biggest stars will go head to head for that one spectacular night in the summer's biggest event. Fox brings you every thrilling moment of the 2010 Major League Baseball All Star game. Coverage begins Tuesday, July the 13th, live from Anaheim at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Only on Fox. The night is over for Kyle Kendrick. They're going to bring on David Herndon from the bullpen. Our skyline chili call to the bullpen. We'll be right back. By Cabin Wood Staines. May the 29th in Florida, Roy Halladay, perfect game, 27 up, 27 down, 11 strikeouts. And with fewer than 20 perfect games in the history of baseball, what have we had, three of them already this year, along with two no-hitters? It's a really amazing. It is the year of the pitcher. And the Reds will see Roy Halladay the last game of this three-game series against the Philadelphia Phillies. In fact, that last out, he had him hit it to the right guy, didn't he, Juan Castro? Oh, yeah. Well, David Herndon is a new pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. A Rule 5 draftee picked up from the Angels back in December during the Rule 5 draft. And here he is, stuck at the big league team and been in 23 ball games. Infield drawn in for Brandon Phillips. And he takes inside ball one. Brandon one for three. Got a big hit in that sixth inning and later scored 
That was after Johnny Cueto hit a routine ground ball to the right of Chase Utley to begin the inning in a scoreless game. Utley committed an error. Phillips got a base hit and the Reds were rolling thereafter. Little number and a short light and then the outfield grass it's caught by Utley. So Phillips missing a golden chance to knock in a run right there and there are two outs in the inning. Ball not carrying the right. So now Orlando Cabrera. Been a good night for Orlando. After a ground out to short in the first inning, he doubled down the left field line in the fourth inning. And then single to right in the sixth. And he's also made some very superb defensive plays out there. Naturally, with two away, the infield backs up for the Phillies. One or third. Oh, and he had him coming in in a hurry by showing butt. Hit by Cabrera, his third hit tonight to make it a five run lead for the Reds. Welcome back, Orlando Cabrera. Yeah, you know what? It looked like Orlando Cabrera for a while there when he was in that slump was just tired, and he's a good high ball hitter, as you see right there at the very upper end of the strike zone that pitch is. But he would seemingly get underneath that pitch instead of staying on top of it. And he'd pop that ball up, and that's why his batting average slumped so dramatically. But in the last couple of days, he seems to be keeping his head still, doesn't dive at the ball as much. He must be rejuvenated coming back home to Cincinnati, and he's hitting the ball a whole lot better. Well, another pitching change made by Charlie Manuel. They'll bring on the left hander, J.C. Romero. We'll be back in a moment. For one of the three finalists in People Magazine's All Star Among Us, choosing the person in our community who gives his or her time and resources to help others. And our winner from the Reds organization, Mindy Atwood from Hilliard, Ohio, just outside Columbus. And Mindy will be honored at the All Star game in Anaheim on July the 13th, seen only on Fox. Her organization Patches of Light. Plus the other 29 All-Star Among Us, one representing each major league club, will be there that night. Patches of Light helps critically ill children and their families during emergencies to pay for expenses. Everything from utility bills, hospital parking, you name it, they're there for Great stuff to many at work. Base hit in the right center field off the bat of Joey Votto against J.C. Romero. So the Reds inning continues. Leading six to one. Uh, J.C. Romero in for the 22nd time. Started his major league career in 1999 with the Minnesota Twins. Started 22 ball games for the Twins in 2000 and 2001. And the last four years, or at least three and a half years, he has been with the Philadelphia Phillies and all out of relief. Romero for a long time has been among the best left-handed relievers in the National League and all the baseball for that matter. Breaking ball in there to Scott rolling a strike and especially when you're talking about lefty on lefty. That's what makes Joey Votto so impressive so impressive when you look at his career numbers batting left-handed against left-handed hitter or left-handed pitchers. I mean he's right up around 300 there. Amazing. In the dirt. Did that ball hit Scott Rowland? No. Nice play there by Brian Schneider, preventing either runner from advancing. Romero, all those years in Minnesota, then came to the Phillies. He has pitched in five division series three in the American League and two in the National League. 
He was injured almost all of last year and did not pitch in the postseason for Philadelphia. Two and one to Roland. Cabrera three hit night. He's a runner over at third. Joey Votto a three hit night. The runner at first. Scott Rowland has knocked in three runs. And he's on for the second time in the game. Now let's see if Johnny Jones can find that magic stroke. Seems like the last. Week to 10 days, he's been popping a lot of balls up rather than driving the ball in the gaps. But Charlie Manuel's been trying to play matchup as best he can in this inning. He brought in a right hander, Herndon, to face Phillips and Cabrera. Cabrera got a base hit off of him, brought the left hander Romero in to face Joey Votto. Votto got the base hit off the lefty. Walks the right hander with another right hand with bases loaded. He's going to stick with Romero. Johnny Gomes is popped to the shortstop, popped to the right fielder, and fouled out to the catcher. He takes up and away for ball one. Baseman Valdez and the force play will end the inning. Reds leave them loaded, but they score twice. We go to the eighth where the Reds lead the Phillies six to one. Scott Rowland, his 300th career home run. It came in the fourth inning in a scoreless game to put the Reds in front 2 nothing. Rolling a team leader now for the Reds this year, 17 home runs. Has a total of three batted in tonight. The team leader in that category as well with 53 of those. Now we told you at the very beginning of the ball game that Johnny Cueto had a little payback to give to the Philadelphia Phillies. Last year in July, July the 6th, they knocked him around in two-thirds of an inning. Over 50 pitches in those two-thirds of an inning. Nine earned runs, three walks, five hits. They, it seemed like everything the Phillies hit came around to score a run. And tonight, they're getting paid back. Seven innings of one-run baseball by Johnny Cueto, and he is still out there dealing. Ross Blow pinch hitting to begin the Philadelphia eighth inning for Romero. Earned in a third of an inning, allows a hit, no runs. Romero, two thirds, one hit, one walk, no runs. All six runs, five of them earned. Against starter Kyle Kendrick, who retired the first ten batters of the night. Reds got him for two in the fourth, two in the sixth, two more in the seventh. Now the one two to blow popped up Cabrera getting turned around and what a play by Orlando Cabrera it has been that kind of night for statistically anyway the best defensive team in the National League I'll tell you what there's no way to put a number on this except put a little star next to this box in your scorebook you've got to be an athlete to make that play.
It's like catching a hummingbird. Mm -hmm. Pitch number 100 of the game by Cueto. Grab it foul. to beating this Philadelphia team is to keep this man off base. And that Cueto is done. 0 for 3 is Jimmy Rollins. Cody Rollins has been on the disabled list twice. He's only playing in his 18th game of the year. The Phillies are 9 and 1 in the games where he scores a run. That's this year. Charlie Manuel there a moment ago and of course he took over from Mike Hargrove in Cleveland after all those years managing in the minor leagues and a big league coach in 2000 won 90 games his first year as a major league manager but the Indians finished second the next year they won their division 91 wins got beaten the playoffs in 02 they started the year 39 and 47 and fired Charlie Manuel. You win 90 games in back to back years. You start the following year, eight games under 500, and you're run out of town. He had to wait three years to get another job. And in his first five years as manager of the Phillies, compiled the best record among all teams in the National League. Guided the Phils to the 2008 World Championship, only the second title in the history of the franchise. And they've won three straight division titles. <laughs> Apparently he got dumb and got real smart in a hurry. <laughs> a one, two, three, eight. What a great night for Cueto. A standing ovation as he leaves the field. for the 2010 Reds Hall of Fame induction gala Sunday night July the 18th that's on a Sunday there'll be Reds Hall of Famers here current Reds players and so many more to celebrate the newest class of inductees Chris Sabo Pedro Borbone and the late Tony Mullane reserve your spot today it's a great event 513-765-7921 or visit RedsMuseum.org Left-hander Mike Zagurski takes over on the mound for the Phillies. Reds bat in the home half of the eighth inning, leading the opener in this series 6-1. to one. Chad Durbin recently went down for the Phillies. They figure he's going to miss at least three weeks. So Zagurski back up with the Major League Club. Called up six days ago. Cardinals are leading Arizona 2-0. That game in the top of the fifth inning in St. Louis. Cubs and the Pirates tied at one at Wrigley Field. We'll be making our way to Chicago to open a four-game series on Thursday afternoon. All-day games, and we'll have every one of them on television for you. In fact, every game on the road trip is on TV. Four in Chicago, three in New York, 
four in Philadelphia. Just the way it ought to be. The only game between now and the break that will not be on television is a finale of this series on Wednesday afternoon. We're very much uh, looking forward, as all of you are, to the 4th of July weekend. On that actual day, the Reds will be in Chicago, and we have a special telecast for you that night, provided by our friends from Marathon, an Ohio-based company, Marathon. We'll be broadcasting on the American Forces Network. We'll have a live conversation with a soldier, hopefully in a... A young man who attended the University of Cincinnati from Ohio, now serving in Afghanistan, and ball drilled in the right center field, and that is up against the wall by Jay Bruce. And he's in with a double to begin the inning. Going to have limited commercials for that July 4th telecast. Bring you stories of the Reds community and patriotic involvement, including Aaron's aces. And fans will have a chance to text messages to soldiers, which will scroll across the screen throughout the entire game. And they will see it on AFN. Should be a great day and a great weekend. Drew Stubbs. His infield hit started the two run rally an inning ago. First two aboard here in the eighth inning. Uh, Gazerski is a Zagurski was up 25 games last year, and this is only his third ball game. As you mentioned, Tom, he was a strikeout artist when he was down in the International League this year. He was leading the league in strikeouts per inning. Or per nine innings, that he had more than 13 strikeouts per nine innings, but he's having a hard time throwing the ball where he wants to right now. Here's Ramon Hernandez being asked to bunt and lays it down perfect. Sacrifice for Ramon Hernandez. Good night for Ramon tonight. Great work behind the plate, working with Johnny Cueto. Made a couple of nice plays back there. A double score to run, now a sacrifice. Well, you wouldn't sacrifice in front of the pitcher if you knew Johnny Cueto was coming up there, but he's got over 105 pitches. I, I forget exactly the number that he had, but he was worked right around that. So what they're going to do is bring in Chris Heisey, move the runners over to second and third, let Chris Heisey swing away. Even if you just only get a fly ball right here that plates another run, it gives you a six-run lead. And with this Philly offense, you just can never have enough. Well, the infield drawn in for Heisey. Johnny Cueto, eight innings of six hit, one run baseball through 109 pitches in the game. He walked two batters. Stunningly did not strike out a batter in the game tonight. That is amazing. I mean, he had good stuff, too. Ball one in the dirt. But those are the kind of games where you start to, to build a reputation. And you can say, well, it's the end of June, and that's all fine and dandy. We talked about this being the first of 14 straight games the Reds are going to play every day. And they're going to play against some very good teams. One of them's on the field they're playing against tonight. 
And in the very first game, in that run of games, you stay on the mound for eight innings against this Philadelphia lineup and you give up one run, that's the way you set the tone for what you hope will be a very good series. Absolutely right. If you hold them the one run in this ballpark, that is saying something. Plato's had one other start this year where he did not strike out a batter. That was a game he gave up a huge lead in St. Louis. In there, strike. Well, I would imagine that Heisey saw Zagurski in the International League this year. Three balls and two strikes. Got a pretty fast arm. Reminds you a little of John Crock, doesn't he? He does. Pulled down the left field line. Caught. By Ibanez tagging and scoring his Bruce sack fly RBI by Heisey seven to one. Reds. It's a good job right there by Chris Heisey. That's why he was sent to the plate. Make contact, get the run in. All it took was a medium fly ball anywhere out there, and he hit it down the left field line and made it very easy for the Reds to score an extra run. And of course, Heisey, we've talked about many times, a Pennsylvania kid. Well, he got his first big league hit, first big league home runs against the Pirates. And out his first game against the Phillies, an RBI off the bench. So now Brandon Phillips, one for four in the game. And that one thrown all the way to the backstop. Beginning play a half game better than St. Louis, missing a chance to pick up a game yesterday. The Cardinals losing two out of three over the weekend at Kansas City. The Cardinals in front at home against Dan Heron with Chris Carpenter on the mound, two nothing. Two strikes to Phillips. Game two of this series coming your way tomorrow night. Again, we'll have it for you on TV. Mike Lee getting an extra turn through the rotation. Back on the mound. Five and one. ERA at 2.92 against Kentucky native right hander Joe Blanton. Blanton not having a good year, but. You know, the M.O. on Blanton pretty much his entire career is he is a much better second half pitcher than first half pitcher. And more than capable of pitching a very good game every time he takes a ball. Hadn't gone that well so far this year.
And Phillips continues to foul him away. Phillips behind one and two. This will be the seventh pitch, and he had back to Brandon. And it missed the inside corner. Another excellent at bat for Brandon Phillips. He's where it bats it. Not only Brandon Phillips, but so many of these Reds players in the last year or two, I'm not going to say mail in the at bat, but certainly not have regularly this kind of at bat. It's a two and two count. This is a ninth pitch inning. And he's gone swinging. So it didn't end the way he wanted it. But we go to the ninth, and the scoreboard is the way you want it. Reds lead seven to one. I've brought to you by Kings Honda in the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. Couple of changes for the Reds. Chris Heisey will stay in the game and play left field. But on the mound, the arrival of Bill Bray, 27-year-old native Virginian, who of course came to the Reds in that blockbuster deal on July the 13th 2006 from the Washington Nationals Bray now 27 years old a former number one pick by the Montreal Expos broke in with the Nationals in 06 came to the Reds had a rough 07 a lot of injuries but an 08 pitch in 63 games with a 2.87 ERA had more injuries at the beginning of last year Bothered by a tender elbow, which turned into Tommy John surgery. He pitched in three total games all of last year, and they were all at Triple A. His first pitch in this ninth inning will be his first pitch in the major leagues since the 08 season. And he'll be facing Juan Castro, the pinch hitter. So, welcome back, Bill Bray. He had to wonder when this day was going to come for a long time, if it would ever come. I would imagine, Chris, you can have guys tell you from now until the proverbial cows come home, that guys come back from Tommy John. But those are guys who weren't going to bed that night knowing they were having Tommy John surgery the next day. <laughs> Good point. You know, you can see it in his eyes and almost hear it in his voice during the interview that I'm not, I can't remember who did it with Bill Bray, whether it was Jim Day or, or Jeff McCorro, but uh, how emotional he was just talking about his rehab and how he was so surprised that when uh, Teddy Power, the Reds pitching coach at AAA, told him he was coming to the big leagues. I mean, all those months of work, the rehab, the time that your arm is in a sling where you've got to sleep on one side because you can't roll over on it. And I have to get, get it and get up and go to the ballpark and bust it one more day with really, you know, you have a process like that. And for the first few months, you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. I mean, because you're not even throwing yet. And then you can play a little toss on the side. And then they extend you a little bit more. And then after months and months and months, they finally get let you get on a mound. And here he is back in a big league mound. And he's going to retire the first battery faces. You know, I've always thought that Bill Brace had just a terrific arm, and of course that's why he's still hanging around because he, he he has never really pitched to the potential that his body and his arm has shown all the way from the time he was drafted. Always had kind of a herky-jerky delivery, and for me, I didn't think he was a guy with that delivery that he could repeat it enough to, number one, stay healthy, or number two, throw consistent strikes. And he worked on smoothing it out, getting better, being able to repeat it over and over again, and that's what's going to keep him in the big leagues if he can do that. 
He's still a little herky jerky, which is probably helpful for him, but it's a lot better than it was. I'll never forget sitting in the office of then Washington general manager Frank Robinson. In fact, it was right before, about four days before, Bray eventually was traded to the Reds. And Frank Robinson saying, you know, everybody's talking on our team about who might get traded, and the one guy they're all talking about on our team at the time was Alfonso Soriano, leading up to the trade deadline that year. He said, if I were another team calling my team, he said, this would be the guy that I would be trying to get. He said, because I have no doubt this guy's going to be a really good pitcher, if not a closer one day. As Hernandez throws out Howard and the Phillies are down to their final out. Now, whether or not that ever happens remains to be seen. He's just glad to be on the map. You know, I go back to herky-jerky. I didn't mean that in a negative way at all. I mean, if you're picture perfect from a delivery standpoint, sometimes you show the ball to the hitter so well that no matter how good your stuff is, you're going to get whacked around. So you got to be a little deceptive. And Bray is certainly that. If he can work this one, two, three inning right here, boy, oh boy, welcome back, Bill Bray. Well, the crowd. Rising is one here with two down in the top of the ninth inning. And a strike one to Jason Wirt. Johnny Cueto, the story here tonight. Eight innings, six hits, one run. And there's a base hit in the right field by Worth. That'll bring up Raul Ibanez. And these are the bats you really want to see Bray. Doesn't matter if it's one out away from a win. Six run game. But against left handers. He took care of Ryan Howard a moment ago. What about Ibanez? No what? Worth takes second base. Because when the Reds play the final two games of this series and when they go to Philadelphia for four leading up to the break next week. These are the outs that Dusty Baker is looking for from Bill Bray. came back couple of outs couple of hits couple of runs well a breaking ball right there his fastballs around 90 to 92 miles an hour and Ibanez catches a slider that he hangs right out there in the left hander's wheelhouse well the former number one pick of the Cincinnati Reds will come to the plate his trip around Baseball has finally landed him in the big leagues. Dane Sardino looks at his strike. Choice, I beg your pardon, by the Reds in 2000. Played a total of two games for the Reds at the major league level. Gray strikes him out, and that's set. 
A convincing 7-3 win in the open of Chris of this series. And what an effort by that young man right there, Johnny Cueto. Uh, you said it early on, Tom, that he stepped up and the Reds needed him big time. And the way the game began tonight, it didn't seem like Johnny Cueto would be around all that long. He struggled in the first couple of innings, got behind hitters. He ran a count full a lot. But boy, the Reds played some great defense behind him. They made the plays they needed to. And then he responded by taking care of this very potent Phillies lineup effortlessly as he got down towards the fifth, sixth, and seventh inning. So a great job again. Third consecutive superb game by Johnny Cueto. The Reds get him plenty of.